name is Melissa Tatum and I'm going to be teaching a class called Manifest Destiny for U.S. Army Generals and the Face of Modern Native America. But one of my favorite television series growing up in the mid-80s was by James Burke and it was called The Day the Universe Changed. And what he did was he traced through different innovations through history and the impact they had on the way we think and on our legal system and our education system. And that's what I want to do in this course. Because we say in the law, and we say when we work in Indian law, that it's really a lot about history. And you can't teach Indian law without teaching history. But I want to do more than law. Because what I want to do in this class is look at our images of Indians and our preconceptions of Indians, and then what, what the truth is and what's really out there. For example, in the first session, we'll talk about urban Indians. Most people have a view of Indians sort of frozen in the past. Uh, this is a Pendleton blanket. Uh, the Pendleton Company has makes quite a lot of these blankets in their Native American Heritage Series. Uh, this one was commissioned by the Gilcrease Museum, which is a very famous museum for collecting Indian and Western artifacts. And a lot of people think of Indians as frozen in time, and just as what the museums depict them as. So what I want to do is sort of deconstruct that and look and see how we got to those images, where they came from, and what's the truth today. So in the first class we'll look at urban Indians, because actually most Indians don't live on reservations. They live in cities. So we'll look at why that happened and how that happened and how it came about, because it can trace back directly to a U.S. Army general in the 1800s. We'll look at modern tribal governments and the movement for tribal governments to take control of their own destiny. And that actually also traces back to a U.S. Army general, one of two U.S. Army generals in the Civil War who were Indian. One was for the, one fought for the South, that was Stan Wadey, who was Cherokee, and one fought for the, for the, for the Union, and that was uh, Eli Parker, who was Seneca. And he actually became the first Indian to be Commissioner of Indian Affairs. And he had worked directly for General Ulysses S. Grant, who chose Parker to implement his peace plan to replace corrupt local agents with Christian missionaries who were thought to be less corrupt. Uh, but it didn't work out so well. But still that idea of returning control to appropriate people to choose appropriate systems for the reservations is where we're going to end up the course. If you have a if you've ever attended a Redskins game, mm -hmm. if you've ever attended a Cleveland Indians game, if you've ever purchased a Pendleton blanket, if you've ever gone to a museum and looked at Indian artifacts, then you need to attend this class because then we'll figure out how that happened and whether that's a good thing or a bad thing to be doing. But this is not a law class. This is a history class. This is a class about who we are as a country and who we are as a people. And so I really am enthusiastic and excited about teaching this class and I hope to see you in, in the classroom.